In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to make an atomic fireball hard seltzer. Let's get started. Okay, so this thing is super interesting. I came up with this recipe slash idea after walking through Sam's, looking at the bulk candy aisle, and finding a big 180 container of uh, atomic fireballs. Of course, seeing that, I said to myself, what if I made a hard seltzer with it? So this thing tastes a little bit similar to like Fireball, the, the liquor, but it's a lot more smooth, I would say, and probably more refreshing. It is carbonated, so we'll talk about kind of the process, but let's start with the recipe. Um, the recipe is, is right here, 180 unwrapped Fireballs, which took some time, but that's what we did. Um, water up to four gallons and five grams of Lauvin EC1118. This thing uh, is a four gallon recipe, but you can scale down for smaller uh, recipe, smaller amounts or possibly go up if you wanna create even more. Now, the first step you need is a bunch of equipment. I'll go ahead and share all the equipment you need to be able to brew this. So it's all on the screen right now if you're interested in doing this. Of course, you need the recipe. Your step one, will be to go ahead and star sand or sanitize everything. So what I did is I took a brewing grade sanitizer and sanitized every piece of equipment that I was gonna use for this project. Super important, that keeps away any bad bacteria, just a good practice in general. Now, um, I'm gonna divert just a little bit. The This recipe, I'm showing you two ways to do it, there is a bottle conditioned way, which means that it's carbonated in the bottle, which is a different process. And then there is a kegged version. So the kegged version is right next to me. Can't really see it, but I'll show you a little picture of it. So I sanitized everything uh, to start and I went ahead and poured all of my fireballs into about, a two, about two gallons of water. I heated that up, that melted all of the fireball sugar into the water, which is the great starting point for us, is what we need. Okay, so fun fact about this, this whole room smells so strong. Like I am, I'm dying a little bit. This is probably like, it's like hardcore pepper smell. It smells incredible, super cinnamony, but whoo, it's hard to breathe. At that point, I said, okay, now um, I have all of my sugar content. I didn't really want to push it any further. So I went ahead and mixed two more gallons of water in, mixed all of that stuff up, and I, when it cooled down, I pitched my yeast in there. It is very important that you add nutrient to something like this because the sugar doesn't really have a lot of nutrients in it in general, so yeast need nutrients. I use Fermato, you can use Dimonium Phosphate, Fermate K, lots of different options. Once this was mixed up, I took a gravity reading. Gravity readings are where you take a hydrometer, which is a literal piece of equipment for measuring gravity, which is the density of liquid. And you can use an equation to figure out how alcoholic your brew is. So this, based off the hydrometer, started at 1.042, meaning that we were somewhere in that realm um, of probably a 5 point, or sorry, a 6.2-ish percent uh, hard seltzer. Now we know that hard seltzers are a little lower and I'll talk about that in a second. It actually ended up being lower. So what happened is I took the, the hydrometer reading 1.042 to start and I let it start fermenting. It didn't really look like it was fermenting. All right so our fireball seltzer is fermenting. You can't really tell from here and I'm using a waterless airlock so if I do this Hear the hiss, that's uh, CO2 pressure. Whenever this builds up um, and it builds up enough, it'll actually do that on its own. So it's fermenting. Let's let it go and see how far it actually does ferment. Well, I'll put it this way. Most of the time when things are fermenting, you see lots of bubbles. And because of my airlock and all that stuff, I could tell that it was fermenting, but looking at it physically, it didn't really show much fermentation. It went for about 15 to 20 days, I can't remember exactly how long. Um, when I felt like it was slowing down or came to a halt, I took a net, another gravity reading. All right, we are a month into this and it is at 1.004. So it's still got a little bit to go, but we'll see what happens. 
So we burned through roughly about 28 points of gravity, which is somewhere in the realm of like a 3.7%. So we're, we're back down in the hard seltzer range. This thing is probably, I'm gonna round up just for fun, say, 4%. So this thing ended up stopping there. It stopped at 1.014, which was totally fine. The yeast I used had the full capability to go past that to use and eat every sugar. But because I think fireballs have a complex or different sugar in them and the chemical reaction that might have happened with the yeast and then this fireball sugar, I imagine there was some stuff that just didn't ferment out. So it halted at 1.014. I moved it out of the container it was in, and I put um, about three gallons into this three gallon carboy, and then I put close to a gallon into a single gallon carboy. This is where you get to learn the two different things. You can either go the realm of um, bottle carbonating this, because I think this is best carbonated. If you want to bottle carbonate, you are going to take and add um, a non-fermentable sugar to this brew, so something like erythritol or something that the yeast can't eat so that it will stay sweet for sure. And then you want to go ahead and actually add some more priming sugar. So priming sugar is regular sugar that yeast can eat. When you add those the priming sugar in and you bottle it, it creates bottle carbonation and I'll show you in a moment what that's like. The other way, other thing you can do, if you want to keg this, which I think is the better option, you can take and actually stabilize it. So I stabilized with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite, which are two things that halt yeast fermentation. I then added about two cups of regular sugar to the brew and just mixed it in and that back sweetened it. So that back sweetened it to the level that I felt was comfortable, sweet enough, a good balance. The final gravity for this was 1.030. If you're, if you're new to this, back sweet until you feel like it's sweet enough. Final gravity matters, but it's not the end of the world to know it or not know it. When I put it into the keg, I of course just went through the kegging portion, which means I took CO2 and I pumped it into the keg. I let it set for a couple days. It carbonated, leading to this right here. I'll show you. I got my keg tap right here actually, because the keg is portable. It, uh, we got ourselves a carbonated, version of it right here. Very, very red, very nice. Now let me go ahead and pour the non, well, I'll say the the bottle carved version. All right, there's the bottle carved version. So this right here is the bottle carved. It looks the exact same, of course, it just went through the bottle carving process. This is the keg carved. They're both taste, well, I will say this. This one right here, the kegged one had, quote, regular sugar in it, which means that it, it tastes like table sugar. This one had the erythritol, which is a non-fermentable sugar that's plant-based, and it, it tastes very, very similar. Yeah, that's basically identical. This right here is, is super interesting. I was a little shocked at how this turned out. I will say it has a little bit of an odd, odd aftertaste. I do believe the fireball sugar has something about it that's a little odd. And I, I shared this with some friends and they ha all had the same kind of result. It does have a little bit of a, um, they described it as, as a little plasticky side. And I would agree. It's got a little bit of an oddness to it. I think that the yeast again and the, the fireball sugar might have had a little weird reaction. I don't know if a different yeast would have yielded a different result, but I think it's pretty good. And I think that it it really does taste like a fireball minus the heat. It doesn't have the atomic like burn, scold your face portion at all. It just has like a cinnamony kind of spicy lingerness. It was very easy to make. The hardest, hardest part of course is unwrapping 180 fireballs. So that took some time. I do think there's a world where you could do this with, say, uh, cinnamon sugar of some sort, um, but I do believe that the atomic side, while we don't get a heat, also gives a little bit of a different character to it, which is interesting. So what's important here is knowing there are two ways to do this. There's a bottle carved version, there's a kegged version. You have lots of options, and I think it's very interesting to do either one. They both 
uh, kind of go to the same, go through the same steps until you get to the end. So they both start by unwrapping everything, sanitizing everything, mixing all of your ingredients up, melting down the fireballs, all of that, taking gravity readings, those were all the same. Where it starts to differ, if you're gonna go bottle carved or kegged, is at the stage where you start sweetening. If you want to bottle carbonate this thing, meaning that you use the yeast in it to allow or build up carbonation, you need to make sure you don't stop them. So in that case, you are gonna use a non-fermentable sugar to back sweeten, like erythritol or some other one you find. And then priming sugar, which is something yeast can eat. The yeast take the priming sugar, they eat it in the bottle, essentially, and they create carbonation, which is what led to this. If you do the kegging version, you can stabilize it, stabilize it with one of these methods right here, and then you can back sweeten with regular sugar because the yeast can't eat it. Keg it, carbonate it that way, it's real good. This one is fascinating. I would love to do this with a bunch of other varieties of this because I think that while there is a bit of an, an odd taste to it, it still has a smooth factor to me. It's very refreshing. It's only like 4%. So I could, I mean, I could easily crush these two things and still, still feel fine. Still, apparently not. Still feel fine. It's, it's very interesting and fun. I hope you've enjoyed this. I love getting to do these things. This is a hard seltzer. I make a lot of mead, which is a honey-based beverage. This is a hard seltzer, meaning that it is sugar-based and generally lower ABV. Um, I don't have a great, I don't have nutritional facts about this. Uh, I don't really care. <laughs> if you wanna make it, the recipe is right here. Of course, upscale as you want to, downscale. If you do make this, please let me know what you think. I would love to know your results. I think it'd be very interesting to see what happens when other people do this as well. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll catch, uh, your, tune in for another video in the future, and I will see you next time. Cheers.